I remember I told you it was just going to get an overview. I'm not getting into details yet until I bring um, everyone that chooses to watch a walking ministry online and listen to Pastor Rich. I want you to understand what the Bible is and about first before I start to um, get into the preaching that you will use to apply to your life as you move around and live in this world. Okay, the prophets. <clears throat> the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, jo uh, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. 16 books. These books show us one of the main ways God chose to speak to us through his representatives called prophets. And there's a lot of misconception about the word prophet and what it means. But again, it's just an overview. They declared events that would happen and based on how the people lived their lives according to God's will or against it. They were able to predict future events because it was revealed to them by God through visions or dreams or whatever way God chose. Many of the prophets also spoke of Jesus who was to come. Remember, this is the Old Testament before Jesus. Deuteronomy 18, 22. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. It, the, it's difficult at times to uh, read the Bible because of the way it's worded. Okay, so what I just said, if you listen, go back to it, uh, it's basically saying that when a prophet tells you something, if what he tells you does not come to pass, then he's not one sent by God. Okay? And it further says, the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. God continues to speak to us today, did you know that? Through his Holy Spirit. Many, many examples. Uh, Okay, we'll talk about that later. Joel, uh, chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. Means every human. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Joel said this around 700 years before Jesus. The apostle Peter testified of this prophecy being fulfilled by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, this uh, thus giving believers the gift of the Holy Spirit, which enables us with signs, but, uh, one by speaking in tongues and or unknown languages, or even foreign ones, having never learned. But th uh, that's Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 21. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, Peter speaking. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy remember he's just um, speaking about the scriptures back then which all they had was the Old Testament okay now let's move on to the New Testament okay <clears throat> God the Son this is what the New Testament is revealed but let me say this the Old Testament although it's about God the Father but from the beginning in Genesis it is as soon as Adam and Eve sinned God spoke of Jesus so the entire Old Testament which is of God is a prophecy of Jesus to come and now we have the New Testament now the New Testament of the Bible consists of the Gospels and um, just for those who don't know the word gospel means good news okay the Acts of the Apostle the letters of Paul the general epistles and revelation 27 books making a total of 66 books in the bible and i have a something um, that i want to share with you about that um, again future sermon okay let's go over the gospels the first one the first section of the new testament the good news matthew mark luke and john are accounts of the life of jesus on earth Knowing and living the Gospels intimately is having an intimate relationship with God by having the Holy Spirit living inside you and through, uh, and through knowing and believing in Jesus. So that's how you, by 
knowing and believing in Jesus, which is called being born again, not just a head knowledge of who Jesus is. There's a difference. When I strayed and lived in sin after my brother's uh, death, that's from um, 94 to 2016, I was living in sin. So, and I knew about Jesus at the time. So that is not, I, I did not have the indwelling spirit. I had the knowledge of Jesus, but then the spirit was alongside, guiding to try to get you to fall in love with him so that the indwelling spirit can, can uh, enter you. So there's, that's the difference. Okay, so once you're born again, now the spirit is no longer alongside, it's inside. Okay, all right. Now, okay, by believing in Jesus, for God so loved the world again, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. Now remember, <clears throat> the, this um, verse, when it says believe, to truly believe is not just the head knowledge. When you believe, you repent. And the word repent, before I used to think it just means, oh, I'm so sorry for what I did. That's part of it, but that's not the true meaning. The true meaning to change your, your mind, to do a 180. So in other words, the way you used to think or your opinion, it doesn't matter. You have to drop that, empty your cup, and take on God's ways because that's the truth. And, you know, again, he created everything without you. So how much of your opinion do you think really matters? Okay, so that's what truly being born again is no longer my will, your will. And then eventually your wills and desires change. People are afraid of this. Because you think, oh, if I surrender to, to God, then, oh, look at all my nice things. I, uh, I'm going to... No, God's not going to take anything from you. In other words, uh, not in other words, but it may bless you even further. The problem is you tend to love the things more than the giver of those things. That's just, that's just a big misconception in the world. Okay, if you look at all the patriarchs or, or the biblical uh, figures, you'll find out many of them were wealthier than anyone living up today. And they were godly. They were, they were in a relationship with God, but yet they still sin. That's another story. Okay, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said that. There's only one way to God. And Jesus said it's through him. I don't want to give too much now, but think about this for a second. And I will repeat myself because it's necessary. If Jesus is not who he says he is, and yet he says in scriptures, I've overcome the world. And he says he's the only way to God. Now let me ask you this. Did you know that the biggest holiday in the world, what? You probably say Christmas. Yes. Second is Easter and Christmas signifies what the birth of Jesus Easter Jesus resurrection from his crucifixion and so that's first and second place and he holds the earth one two and three three places he holds the top first second third place number one our current calendar the year 2023 uh, for those of you who have ever read, watched, the only movie I can think of right now is Braveheart. When they talk about the year, they say, in the year of our Lord. What Lord they're talking about? It's Jesus. B.C., before Christ. A.D. A.D. is not after the death. The proper meaning is Latin. Is A.D. is Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord. So our calendar is actually an acknowledgement of the existence of Jesus Christ. And that's not first and last name. We'll get into that another time. Also, <clears throat> they try to, the Bible says man's wisdom, they profess to be wise only to become fools. Okay, that's when we, we lean only on our wisdom because we went to school for 30 years and now we're smart. Now, they try to change the current, um, instead of BC, AD, to now CE. Do you know what that means? C E Christ existence or my preferred uh, example 
Another example, but the meaning, CE. We're now living in what? The Christian era. That's what CE means. Okay. I'm Pastor Rich, Walking Ministries Online, and I will see you soon.